Welcome from the parish of Austinville. Standing alongside the memorial in East Ballina, which recalls the massacre of Aboriginals in the early days of white settlement. We acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we worship, work and meet, the Bundjalung people. We acknowledge their elders past and present, giving thanks for their care of the land. O Christ, in whose body was named all the violence of the world, we lay open to you the violence done in our name in time before memory, the unremembered wounds we have inflicted. We lay open to you those whose continued oppression provides the ground we stand on. The remembrance of them is grievous to us. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, at the 22nd verse. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. We have all sorts of dramas, don't we, with this COVID, and I think I'm allowed to take off my mask as I talk to you.
Those masks create difficulty for our people wearing glasses. They make us feel like we're suffocating. They do all sorts of terrible things, but that's just the way it is right now. One of the many changes we've had to come to live with and also things like fiddling around with these different microphones and today we're very lucky we've got some uh, lovely young girls from the university coming to help us in our projection of this service over the internet many people are watching over the internet many people discovering new faith they may have been challenged by being in church at a previous time so gives us the need to work out how do we reconnect with these people. Many groups have been shut down because of COVID. One of them that's now recently reopened is AA, a very successful group, wonderful meeting format, lives being changed by recognising the need to lean on a higher power. They don't get in much strife when they refer to a higher power. But isn't it interesting how things start to become difficult when you explain what you're believing? Seems to be different levels of risk using different terminology. Saying you're religious is just not quite as acceptable as saying you're spiritual. People can rattle off, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, knowing they're not going to get into too much strife. But once they say I'm religious, you know, back off a little bit. And it's much more risky to actually say, I'm a Christian. I believe Jesus is God. And that really raises a, an important question. Who is Jesus? How do you know what to believe when you hear some people talk of Jesus simply being a great prophet or Jesus being a brilliant human teacher or as the Jehovah's Witnesses say that he's just one of many gods. These things give us challenges. There was a king of what we now know as Thailand, he used to be called Thayam, and I don't think this was the same king that featured in the, uh, you know, the stage playing the musical King and I. That's, that's a sort of real story of a, a governess who worked with the king's children. But there was a king, I think a different king, who had a teacher, an English teacher, and they were really, really good friends. They got on extremely well. And then one day, this Englishman spoke about water becoming so hard that an elephant could walk on it. The king blew his top. The friendship was over. The king had never experienced ice. And he wasn't prepared to believe something that he couldn't understand. What should the king have done? It's not easy to know what we should do about things that we don't understand. I know many well-educated people who are sometimes quite accepting of things they don't understand. They'll use their computer without the slightest knowledge of what's going on inside of it, how it all works. Happy to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, again, without really knowing the science behind it. It just, it's okay, it just works. But there are some people you run across at times who simply won't accept things that they can't understand. There are times when we perhaps miss out on knowing the truth either because we are not prepared to make an effort to investigate and find out just how this thing works or what it is, or like the king, we refuse to trust in something that we're not able to see. This is the problem that Jesus' disciples had. In today's scripture, a group of Jesus' disciples have great difficulty in recognising him. 
They don't know that the figure they see walking along in the roaring waves is actually Jesus. The disciples were in a boat. The wind was against them, driving them way out to sea. As dawn breaks early in the morning, they see a terrifying sight. There's a figure walking across the water towards them. And they yell out in fear, it's a ghost. Then Jesus spoke to them, take heart, it is I, don't be afraid. Presumably even when Jesus spoke to them, they still were not sure it was Jesus. Because if Barbara had read on a bit further in this story, we read the little bit that's in your newsletter, the beginning of the newsletter talks about the problem where Peter actually said something very strange. He said, Lord, if it's you, ask me to get out of the boat and come to you. What an odd thing for Peter to say. If it's really you, ask me to get out. If the figure is on the water is Jesus, he will say that, according to Peter. Maybe that's how we'll know Jesus. Jesus is the one who extravagantly, recklessly, commands us to leave the safety of whatever boat we're in, to step out into the sea, to test the waters, to show what our faith is made of. That's Jesus. Have you heard a song often sung at funerals? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. You know that one? Yeah. When you think about it, that's pretty tough, isn't it? Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling us to risk our life to throw caution to the wind, to step out of the boat and defy death. Earlier on in the gospel stories, we know how Jesus called a group of very ordinary fishermen. Just drop your nets, leave your family, leave the business and come with me on a perilous journey called discipleship. So maybe we shouldn't find it strange for one of those people now to say, Lord, if it's really you, call me to get out of the boat and walk with you on the waves. I studied my theological degree at the Bible College of Queensland, up in the back of Tuong underneath Mount Cutha. And in my full-time study there, I was alongside a lot of really young people. People who'd given up very successful careers with bright futures. There were teachers, an occupational therapist, no, Kathy, lovely lady, classical musicians. One of them offered free of charge, well, if we fed her breakfast, she'd come and help our son learn the piano. She was a lecturer at, or had been a lecturer at the conservatorium. There were managers, computer programmers. A lot of these young people had given up well-paid careers to prepare to serve as missionaries. Who would have commanded them to do such a thing? Could it have been Jesus? Up in the hills behind Coffs Harbour, there's a complex of accommodation and lecture rooms, a place called Sherwood Cliffs. It's a place that's got a very successful ministry to drug and alcohol addicted people. At Sherwood Cliffs, the people that 
work there full time, receive very small salaries, and the place is able to exist because of donations. And I knew of one young couple, a young couple, who made a promise of regular support to Sherwood Cliffs on top of what they were already committing to their church. How could they? On their limited incomes, at an early stage in their lives, make such a commitment? Well, I knew they said, we just thought this was the sort of thing that our Lord Jesus would expect us to do. We both know how important our youth are and how tough it can be growing up these days. So we've chosen to make this commitment. Is this the sort of thing our Lord might expect of us? What sort of Lord would expect us to make such a sacrifice? Could it be Jesus? And the good news is that when Peter climbed out of the boat, even though the going was rough, even though he almost sank and perished, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him just at the right moment. Jesus helped Peter back into the boat, stilled the wind and the waves. Peter was saved. But if Peter had not moved, had not obeyed Jesus' call to walk on the water, then Peter would have never had this great opportunity for recognition and rescue by Jesus. I wonder if many of us are simply splashing about in safe, inshore, shallow water, consequently missing out on opportunities to test our faith. Perhaps if we want to be close to Jesus, this gospel story today suggests that we need to get out of the boat. We're being encouraged to take ourselves out into the deep, dark sea. We've got to prove God's promises through trusting God's promises, through risk and venture. I haven't really read many of his books lately, because he's been dead since about 1996, but a, a guy called Henry Nouwen used to impress me. He was a Dutchman, he was a theologian, he was a psychologist, a lecturer, a priest. One of his very, very special books to me was a book called The Wounded Healer. And he gave up a brilliant career of lecturing internationally and served many of the last years of his life as a carer in an institution for disabled people called Daybreak. Looking after these severely disabled people, he had one particular person, couldn't speak, couldn't, couldn't do anything, that he looked after. What made him do it? What force drove Henry Nouwen to this place of giving to others rather than taking all that he could get? Someone had called him to step out of the boat, to risk walking on water, to defy the forces of nature, to come closer, to venture out in the storm? Could it have been Jesus? So friends, if in the dead of night, maybe near dawn, you should hear a voice calling your name, a strange voice tenderly, softly calling you, calling you to get going, sail away, risk the storm to defy the waves, there's a good chance that voice could belong to none other than your very Lord and Saviour. Who would want ordinary, not very spectacular, faithful people like us? Who would want that person like you and me to be adventurous, to take a bit of a risk. Who would be calling us, do you think? Could it be Jesus? 
Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, you know that sometimes we're very comfortable, very settled where we are. Help us to know when you are calling us to do something that might even be a bit risky. And help us, Lord, to respond in the way you desire. We ask in your holy name. Amen. Peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, our country and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Murray Harvey, our Bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, God, who is faithful, calls us to acknowledge our shortcomings. We confess together. O oh God, we come to celebrate that your Holy Spirit is present deep within us and at the heart of all life. Forgive us when we forget your gift of love. Awaken us to the love that Christ offers and draw us into your presence. God who has called us is faithful. Live by the Spirit's transforming power and forgive as you have been forgiven. Amen. Before us, Lord, you stand. We 
with outstretched and red and wine at hand, confronting those unworthy of a crown. You ask that to your table we should come. Who dare say no, but such is your resolve. Our worst to witness, suffer and absolve. God, who has called you, is faithful. Go into the world with joy. Forgive generously. Love extravagantly. Live abundantly. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and with us evermore. Amen.